Luther podcast. We're going to try it as a video. So if you've missed the first few installments, you got to go back to the podcast uh, and see those. I'm your host, Pastor Brian Wolfmuller, and this is basically an audio book version of the large catechism, at least to start with me making comments because I just can't help myself. We're working through the large catechism. We've done the first three commandments, and today we have the first half of the fourth commandment. It's amazing. So the first, it takes Luther 102 paragraphs to get through the first three commandments, the introduction of the commandments and the first three, and then he spends 100 and, uh, 100. he spends 74 paragraphs on the fourth commandment, the biggest commandment of them all, bigger than the first commandment, etc. Luther really is digging into the fourth commandment. It's in fact fundamental to his program in the large catechism, what he's arguing which maybe we'll talk about some other time as well. So you can download this version of the Large Catechism at wolfmuller.co for free or buy a little book like this. I think we have even a cooler cover now for like five bucks at the website, and you can follow along. But if you're watching the video, you got to go back and listen to the podcast. If you're just listening to the podcast, this is also going to be available as a video on the YouTube channel, Wolfmuller One. Here's Luther, first part, Large Catechism, Fourth Commandment, Honor your father and your mother. All right, fourth commandment, large catechism. Martin Luther says, Thus far we have learned from the first three commandments, which relate to God. First, that with our whole heart we trust in him and fear and love him through our whole life. Second, that we do not misuse his holy name in the support of falsehood or any bad work, but employ it to the praise of God and the profit and salvation of our neighbor and ourselves. Thirdly, that on holidays and when at rest, we diligently treat and urge God's word so that all our actions and our, our entire life be ordered according to it. Now, following, now following the other seven, which relate to our neighbor, among which the first is the greatest. Now, so Luther says the first three commandments have to do with God. Good. The last seven commandments have to do with our neighbor and the love that God commands for our neighbor. And he says the, four, the greatest of the second table, the greatest of the commandments that have to do with our neighbor is going to be this fourth commandment, which says, Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. To this estate, the fatherhood and motherhood, God has given the special distinction above all estates that are beneath it and that he simply commands us to love our parents and that he not simply commands us to love our parents, but to honor them. In other words, Luther says, it's not enough to love our mom and our dad, but we have to honor our father and our mother. That's a higher thing. Honor includes love, but it's more than that. For with respect to brothers, sisters, and our neighbors in general, he commands nothing higher than that we love them, so that he separates and distinguishes father and mother above all other persons upon earth and places them at his side. For it is a far higher thing to honor than to love one, inasmuch as it, honor, comprehends not only love, but also modesty, humility, and deference as to a majesty there hidden, and requires not only that they be addressed kindly and with reverence, but most of all that both in heart and with the body we so act as to show that we esteem them very highly, and that next to God we regard them, father and mother, as the very highest. For one whom we are to honor from the heart, we must truly regard as high and great. We must therefore impress it upon the young that they should regard their parents as in God's stead and remember that however lowly, poor, frail, and strange they may be, nevertheless they are fa father and mother given them by God. They are not to be deprived of their honor because they conduct because of their conduct or their failings. Therefore, we are not to regard their persons, how they may be, but the will of God, who has thus created and ordained. In other respects, we are, indeed, all alike in the eyes of God. But among us, there must necessarily be such inequality and ordered difference. And therefore, God commands it to be observed that you obey me as your father and that I have supremacy. Oh, there's a lot going on in that paragraph. But it says, look, we don't honor our father and our mother, but the, we recognize that there's a hidden majesty in father and mother. So we don't honor them because of how great they are, because of their honorableness, but rather we honor them because of the office that God has given. And, and Luther says that there are inequalities and ordered differences in 
humanity, and that's how God has established the world. And that the reason why we honor father and mother is not because father and mother say honor and father and mother, but because, but because God says honor your father and your mother. Man, that is, there's a lot going on there. Luther continues. Learn, therefore, first, what is the honor towards parents required by this commandment, namely, that they be held in distinction and esteemed above all things as the most precious treasure on earth. Furthermore, that also in our words we observe modesty toward them, we do not accost them roughly, haughtily, and defiantly, but yield to them and are silent even though they go too far. Thirdly, that we show such honor by our works, that is, with our body and possessions, that we serve them, help them, provide for them when they're old, sick, infirm, or poor, and all that and th- all that not only gladly, but with humility and reverence as doing it before God. For he who knows how to regard them in his heart will not allow them to suffer want or hunger, but will place them above him and at his side and will share with them whatever he has and possesses. This is a, the high command of children to bless and take care of their fathers. Now how, n- well, I don't know, nice, but how important is it that Luther starts here not with children who are in the household of their parents, but rather with children who are grown taking care of their elderly parents. Second, Luther continues, notice how great, good, and holy a work is here assigned children, which is, alas, utterly neglected and disregarded, and no one perceives that God has commanded it, or that it is a holy, divine word and doctrine. For if it had been regarded as such, everyone could have inferred that they must be holy men who live according to these words. Thus there would have been no need of inventing monasticism or spiritual orders But every child would have abided by this commandment and could have directed his conscience to God and said, If I am to do good and holy works, I know of none better than to render all honor and obedience to my parents because God himself has commanded it. For what God commands must be but much and far nobler than everything that we may devise ourselves. And since there is no higher or better teacher to be found than God, there can be no better doctrine, indeed, than he gives forth. Now he teaches fully what we should do if we wish to perform truly good works, and by commanding them he shows that they please him. If then it is God who commands this, and who knows not how to appoint anything better, I will never approve on it. Here you see that Luther is understanding the commandments in contrast to monasticism. Monasticism has people take a vow of obedience, but not a vow of obedience to their parents, but rather a vow of obedience to the order. To the monastic order that they're entering in. And Luther sees that as leaving father and mother, abandoning father and mother, and going for these uh, human self-made works. And he sees the whole Catholic, medieval Catholic structure as, as setting people to do good works by their own account and not doing what God commands. That the commands have something better for us. And that there's a, there's a, what, there's a joy uh, and a, um, a delight that comes from the commandments. Because we know that when we live according to, the, to God's ordering in the commandments, there's, a, that there's something that pleases God in there. We don't have to wonder if the thing that we're doing is right or wrong. Now, that's something amazing, because normally when we think of the law, we think of how the law condemns us and shows us our sin, but the law also gives us boldness to live before our neighbor. Anyhow, Luther continues. Behold, in this manner, we would have a godly child, properly taught, reared in true blessedness, and kept at home in obedience to his parents and in their service, so that men should have... have had blessing and joy from the spectacle, seeing children together with their parents rejoicing. However, God's commandment was not permitted to be thus with such care and diligence commended, but had to be neglected and trampled underfoot so that a child could not lay it to heart and meanwhile gaped like a panting wolf at the devices which we set up without once consulting or giving reverence to God. Let us therefore learn at last, for God's sake, that placing all other things out of sight, our youth look first to this commandment if they wish to serve God with truly good works, that they do what is pleasing to their fathers and mother, or to those whom they may be subject in their stead. For every child that knows and does that this has, in the first place, the great consolation in his heart that he can joyfully say and boast in spite of and against all who are occupied with works of their own choice, Behold, this work is well pleasing to my God in heaven, and I know it for certain. Let them all come together with their many great, distressing, and difficult works and make their boast. We will see whether they can show one that is greater and nobler than the obedience to father and mother to whom God has appointed and commanded obedience next to his own majesty. 
so that if God's word and will are in force and being accomplished, nothing shall be esteemed higher than the will and word of parents, so that it, too, is subordinated to obedience toward God and is not opposed to the preceding commandments. Now here, this is going to be important. Luther orders the commandments rightly, so you don't obey your parents if they command you to break the command of God, everything in its place. Therefore, Luther continues, You should be heartily glad and thank God that he has chosen you and made you worthy to do a work so precious and pleasing to him. Only see that although it be regarded as the most humble and despised, you esteem it great and precious. (laughs) This is not on account of of our, our worthiness, but because it's comprehended in and controlled by the jewel and sanctuary, namely the word and commandment of God. Oh, what a high price would all the Carthusians, nunks, monks and nuns pay if in all their religious doings they could bring into God's presence a single work done by virtue of his commandment and be able before his face to say with a joyful heart now I know that this work is well pleasing to thee where will these poor wretched persons hide when in the sight of God and all the world they shall blush with shame before a young child who has lived according to this commandment and shall have to confess that with their whole life they are not worthy to give it a drink of water and it serves them right for their devilish perversion in treading God's commandment underfoot, that they must vainly torment themselves with works of their own device, and in addition, have scorn and loss for their reward. Should not the heart then leap and melt for joy when going to work and doing what is commanded, saying, Lo, this is better than all holiness of the Carthusians, even though they kill themselves, fasting and praying upon their knees without ceasing. For here you have a sure text, and a divine testimony that he has enjoined this. But concerning the other, he did not make a command, he did not command a word. But this is the plight and the miserable blindness of the world that no one believes these things to such an extent that the devil has deceived us with false holiness and the glamour of our own works. Therefore, I mean I maybe just let me pause and point out there how much Luther expects us to have joy in the commandments because <laughs> we have the certainty of knowing that God has a- approved them. Luther continues, Therefore I would be very glad, I say it again, if men would open their eyes and ears and take this to heart, lest sometime we may again be led astray from the pure word of God to the lying vanities of the devil. Then too all would be well, for parents would have more joy, love, friendship, and concord in their houses. Thus the children could captivate their parents' hearts. Children, There you go. On the other hand, when they are obstinate and will not do what they ought until a rod is laid on their back, they anger both God and their parents, whereby they deprive themselves of this treasure and joy of conscience and lay up for themselves only misfortune. Therefore, as everyone complains, the course of the world is now such that both young and old are altogether dissolute and beyond control, have no reverence or sense of honor, do nothing except as they are driven to it by blows and uh, and perpetrate what wrong and detraction they can behind each other's back. Therefore God also punishes them, that they sink into all kinds of filth and misery. As a rule, the parents too are themselves stupid and ignorant. No, One fool trains and teaches another. As they have lived, so their children live after them. This now, I say, should be the first and most important consideration to urge us to the observance of this commandment, on which account Even if we have no father and mother, we ought to wish that God would set up wood and stone before us whom we would call father and mother. How much more, since he has given us living parents, should we rejoice to show them honor and obedience because we know it is so highly pleasing to the divine majesty and to all the angels and vexes all devils and is beside the highest work which we can do after the sublime divine worship comprehended in the previous commandments so that giving alms of every other good work toward our neighbor are not equal to this. Now, this is really quite something. Luther understands the commandment to be pleasing to God, to be pleasing to the angels, and to be vexing to the devils. When we, when we honor father and mother, we're, we're, we're engaged in spiritual warfare. For God has assigned this estate, father and mother, the highest place. Yea, has set it up on his own, in his own stead upon the earth. This will and pleasure of God ought to be a sufficient reason and incentive to us to do what we can with good will and pleasure. Besides this, it's our duty before the world to be grateful for benefits and every good which we have of our parents. 
So we're adding now gratefulness to honor. But here again, the devil rules in all the world so that children forget their parents as we all forget God. And no one considers how God nourishes, protects, and defends us and bestows so much good on body and soul, especially when an evil hour comes. We are angry and grumble with impatience and all the good which we have received throughout our life is wiped out from our memory. Just so, do, so, just so we do also with our parents. There's no child that understands and considers what the parents have endured while nourishing and fostering him except the Holy Ghost grant him this grace. God knows very well this perverseness of the world. Therefore, he admonishes and urges by commandments that everyone consider what his parents have done for him and he will find that he has from them body and life Moreover, that he has been fed and reared when otherwise he would have perished a hundred times in his own filth. There's a picture for you. Therefore, it is a true and good saying of old and wise men, Deo parentibus et magistris non posset satis grate rependi. That is, to God, to parents, and to teachers, we can never render sufficient gratitude and compensation. <laughs> he that regards and considers this will indeed without compulsion do all honor to his parents and bear them up on his hands as those through whom God has done him all good. Over and above this, so we had honor, thankfulness, over and above this, another great reason that should incite us the more to obedience and to this commandment is that God attaches to this commandment a temporal promise and says that thou mayest live long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Here you can see yourself how much God is in earnest in respect to this commandment. Inasmuch as he not only declares that it is well-pleasing to him and that he has joy and delight therein, but also that it, is, uh, that it shall be for our prosperity and promote our highest good so that we may have a pleasant and agreeable life furnished with every good thing. Therefore also St. Paul emphasizes the same and rejoices when he says in Ephesians 6, this is the first commandment with a promise that it, be, it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long in the earth. For although the rest also have their promises contained in them, yet none is so plainly and explicitly stated. Here then you have the fruit and the reward, that whoever observes this commandment shall be happy, shall have happy days, fortune and prosperity. And on the other hand, the punishment, that whoever is disobedient shall soon perish and never enjoy life. For to have long life in the sense of the scriptures is not only to become old, but to have everything which belongs to long life, such as health, wife and children, livelihood, peace, good government, etc., without which this life can neither be enjoyed in cheerfulness nor long endure. If, therefore, you will not obey father and mother and submit to their discipline, then obey the hangman. If you will not obey him, then submit to the skeleton man, that is, death. Death, the all-subduer, the teacher of wicked children. <laughs> For on this God insists preemptorily, most of all. Either if you obey him, rendering love and service, he will reward you abundantly with all good, or if you offend him, he will send upon you both death and the hangman. Whence come so many knaves that must daily be hanged, beheaded, broken on the wheel, but from disobedience to parents, because they will not submit to discipline in kindness, so that by the punishment of God they bring it about that he would behold their misfortune and grief. For it seldom happens that such perverse people die a natural or timely death. Now this is just very interesting to note. I mean, we look at all the problems that we face in our own day and how many of them can simply be traced back to broken families. It is incredible. I mean, how many people in prison have fathers Luther continues, But the godly and obedient have this blessing that they live long in pleasant quietness and see their children's children as set above to the third and fourth generation. Now, does this always happen? No. But as a rule, if you are obedient to your father and mother, life is going to go better for you, and it's going to go better for those around you and so forth. Thus experience also teaches that where there are honorable old families who fare well and have many children, they owe their origin to the fact to be sure that some of them were brought up well and were regarded full of their parents. On the other hand, it's written of the wicked, Psalm 109, let his posterity be cut off and the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Therefore heed how well a great thing in God's sight obedience is, since he so highly esteems it and, so, and is so highly pleased with it 
and rewards it so richly, and besides enforces punishment so rigorously on those who act contrawise. All this I say, that it may be well impressed upon the young. For no one believes how necessary this commandment is, although it has not been esteemed and taught hitherto under the papacy. These are, simply, uh, these are simple and easy words, and everybody thinks that he knew them uh, of before. Therefore men pass them lightly by, or gaping after other matters, and do not see and believe that God is so greatly offended if they be disregarded, and that no one does a work so well pleasing and precious if he follows them. So far, Martin Luther, Fourth Commandment, the first half. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast or watching the video, watching the podcast here on the YouTubes. Uh, if you missed the first few, you can go back and find them. I don't know how to do that on Podbean. Maybe I'll figure out how to put a link below, but you should be able to get this. Now you can either subscribe to the podcast or you can watch the video. We'll make it its own little playlist here. And uh, you, again, you can follow along. This little guy is five bucks. Uh, tell your friends, the Luther Theocast. I probably need a better name for this thing. Uh, we'll be doing a uh, reading from Luther because there's really, I mean, this is great. It doesn't get better than the large catechism. It's great. So, God be praised. Talk to you next time.